today. Looking out at this group, I was really impressed with the energy that's in this room. And to, to go back and mirror Andy's comments, um, I was thinking back to February of last year when it was a typical Michigan winter in February. Thank you. Um, and we were all huddled in, uh, in the building at, up on the old uh, uh, Wyeth campus and working through things. And I think we were all trying to imagine where we, where we would all go together and how we would get there. And I'm pleased to say 18 months later, this is where we are. This is where we were going. Uh, and in fact, the key challenge for us is now, not knocking over the, the folios, but the, the key challenge now is where we go from here. And I think we've heard today a lot of about where we've been. And I think we'll talk a lot about tomorrow, what our interests are, what our needs are, et cetera. And then we'll talk on Thursday about where we're going. And I think that's really the natural progression of today. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is, is thank our sponsors, our members. Um, you know, the foundation is a member-driven organization. Um, the operating funds that go to, to operate the foundation to run meetings like this uh, come from our members. Um, our gold members are Pfizer, Oracle, Santa Fe, Takeda, Roche, Deloitte. Uh, and as of this morning, I would like to welcome an additional gold member, uh, Perkin Elmer. Michael, are you here? Dan is in the back. So welcome, Perkin Elmer. We're glad to have you join as a gold member. And I'll just note that uh, uh, we did expand our bylaws, so we have room for a couple more gold members. If you're thinking about it, talk to me. OK. Um, we also have our silver members, University of Michigan, who's our host for this site. We'd like to thank University of Michigan for their kind and generous hosting. I've, I've been very impressed with the facilities here, and it feels like home. This is a great place. Um, we also thank Johns Hopkins, uh, one of our other silver members, uh, for their support. And then we have uh, a plethora of bronze members that are really you know, here helping out, bring, us, bring the foundation forward, and participating in things. And I'd really appreciate their, their support and, and efforts. Um, uh, we are working on our membership campaign for 2015. I hope to see this list expand by at least 50% by the time we get together again. Uh, and I appreciate, anyone, appreciate anyone's help in trying to put that together. So uh, if you have any ideas, come see me. Uh, meetings like this, um, you know, one of the things that we've done here, we did very pointedly, is, is not have a registration fee. We want this to be open. We don't want to have anybody restricted by a budget or whatnot being able to come. And the reason we can do that is because we have sponsors for this meeting. Um, and so we have sponsors that have helped us defray the cost. These include uh, Rancho Biosciences. Julie is here. Julie? There we go. Right back there. She's not on the phone, so you can go see her. Um, <laughs> Converge Health by Deloitte. I know we have Brett and Dan here. We're here. Uh, we have uh, Thomson Reuters. We just heard from Andy, and I know there's a number of Thomson Reuters people here, Ceremon amongst others. So say hi to them. Um, and of course, uh, University of Michigan, who has provided the hosting for, for the facilities here. Uh, we have Cognizant as a bronze sponsor uh, helping us out here. And for the dinner and reception, we'll hear a little bit from uh, BT Global Services, which has provided uh, all of the, the hosting infrastructure for the, the development, the testing, and now for the training uh, that Rancho will be working with us on on Thursday. Uh, and of course, the Hive, which has been a, a great and key contributor to the platform you know, since its inception and, and has done a great job. Kay's over here. So. And, uh, and I don't want to leave out Elevata. Elevata is here um, sponsoring the breaks. So everything that we're doing in the breaks are sponsored by Elevata. I think we somehow mistakenly had them way up here. We've now moved them, we're moving them back by the break area. Stop by and say hi. They have a lot of really interesting things that interplay with, with Transmark. So thank you, Elevator. I also, given here, I wanted to, to thank the organizing committee. Uh, we had a group of people that donated a lot of their time and effort uh, to putting together the agenda, to bringing the speakers together, et cetera. And I wanted to, to call them out and thank them. We have you know, Brian Athey from University of Michigan here. Uh, David Peruk. Uh, David joined us and, and really helped out quite a bit. Uh, he was the, the host for the, the meeting in Paris in 2013 and gave us a lot of insights on, on how to run this meeting. And in fact, uh, it was David's idea initially to put everything up on Lanyard, and we've carried that through this year, and I think that's a very useful tool. So I don't know if any of you have not yet downloaded the Lanyard app on your phone, but I'm finding that to be great. Um, Jay Bergeron from Pfizer was uh, one of the key members here contributing from the code committee. 
Uh, Sherry from Santa Fe uh, is here contributing from the content committee, and Sirimon from Thomson Reuters from the, uh, from the community committee, and then the, the foundation staff. So we basically pulled together uh, the form and the agenda for the, for the event, and I hope you agree that uh, in terms of taking a good look at where we are, uh, we had a great set of talks today, a uh, fantastic set. Um, you know, I think coming, you know, except for the first few ones, but uh, uh, the hackathons that we've had here, I'm going to actually ask EK and Jay to tell us a little bit about what's going on with those. But I think we had a great set of things talking about, you know, Matthias, I really enjoyed his, his keynote presentation, was fantastic. Uh, Magali came in and told us a bit about Orion Bio Networks, a very early adopter of the Transmart platform, and who's building on that with her Orion uh, 2.0 program. Um, we heard a bit about, you know, powering prediction for brain disease. Uh, I'm sorry, we got that one. NDX from Dexter. Um, I was really pleased to invite Dexter Pratt. Dexter, are you still in here? Dexter? Oh, he probably snuck out for a call. Uh, NDEX is, is really an interesting platform for uh, integrating pathway content and data across platforms. And that's something we see is, is in the future of Transmart as we, as we grow it out as well. Um, we heard a bit about the Bench to Bedside program. That was a great talk. I think we can go through, and in fact, if you look through, I think there were just a, a number of fantastic talks here. And we ended up with, uh, with Ken Kubota giving us, to me, what is one of the most exciting things about today which is uh, a new nonprofit with a lot of rich data resources coming to the platform, not because they were looking for some software, but because they were looking for collaboration. They're looking for the opportunity to work with partners and share data, and Transmart is just the tool to make it happen. That, to me, really you know, goes back to February, 18 months ago, to the mission that we were talking about, which is it's not about the technology, it's about the collaboration. And that's why open is so important to this. So I'm, I was very, very pleased to, to have Ken come and talk about that. I'm very pleased to welcome you know, Michael J. Fox to the foundation and uh, look forward for more, uh, more interactions like that. Um, what we have coming up is uh, um, a poster session and an awards presentation. So one of the things, and I'll go back to some early advice Dan Hausman gave me when I was uh, getting involved with the foundation, which is, in an open source project, we need to make sure that we recognize our contributors. So, Dan, I'll give you some uh, kudos on inspiration here. Um, and so what, we, what we'll be doing is having an awards presentation, and uh, I will tell you that I cheated on some of this. Uh, number one, I involved the organizing committee, and number two, I took the advice of Mike Worcester at Linux Foundation, who said, whenever you're giving out awards, they have to be data-driven. So you're gonna see a data-driven set of awards that we're gonna give to, to key contributors in our community. And I'll preface those awards by saying, everybody deserves an award. We're gonna hand out a few. Uh, we're gonna hand out more as we go and build as a foundation, as a group. But everybody who's here has contributed. And as a part of that, I don't know, Rudy, have you got one of the, the fleeces over there? EK, where's your jacket? I'm sorry, your jumper. I do. So one of the key things is we wanted everybody to get an award, and so, we have the stylish Transmart Foundation fleece, which we'll be giving out at the award ceremony as well. So everybody gets something, okay? Okay? So if you have, if you brought a poster, you know, as soon as we're done here is the time to set up your posters. We'll have posters out there. We'll have awards presentations. Everybody will get their stylish new Transmart jumper, and, uh, and we'll go from there, okay? So uh, I do want to mention that uh, the awards presentations and the awards ceremony are also sponsored for us. Um, they're sponsored by, uh, by The Hive, uh, in case I think we'll say a few words for us at the beginning of this, and uh, by BT Global Services, two key contributors to the 1.2 platform. Uh, I believe Peter Shaw has not been able to make it, um, and I'm hoping Yuri is here somewhere, because Yuri is, is going to be able to say a few words for us as well. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for staying here for today. Oh, I forgot something. The update on the hackathon. Can you give us a quick update on the hackathon? Who can give us an update on the hackathon? Jay. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I crashed it, actually, for a little while. So um, actually, looking around, so there were three groups. We had, we talked about three items. 
um, one of the groups, which is the University of Michigan contingent, with Loney on the phone, which I think is really, really exciting, uh, with Terry leading this in EVO. Uh, they're working on uh, three items for attaching Transmart to the Loney, uh, the Loney analytical pipelines. So we're looking forward to see what they can do over the next two days. Let's see, the uh, Sample Explorer, there's a group of about five or six people who are working on that when I was upstairs, and they also have a, um, uh, taken a look through, I think, the code, and they have some idea of where they'd like to be in a couple days. And uh, the third one is actually done, which is the, uh, <laughs> which actually was mine, you know, the one I suggested. and. Well, it clearly which wasn't, is, you know, challenging enough. Yeah, <laughs> which is the which is the galaxy, and kind of thinking about socializing that. But the few people who are at that table, um, the Venkata was like, and and Axel and, and the, uh, Axel who uh, from Etrix and in UK's group is just like, look, we already did this. Here it is, and <laughs> uh, and Venkata's got a nice demo of of what it looks like. So now they're thinking about what what potentially they can do on top of that to really make um, those types of integrations work from within Transmart. So actually it's, you know, I crashed it for about 15 minutes and it's really looking great. And thanks for everyone who's doing the real work there and looking forward to see what, what happens in a couple of days. Thanks. Fantastic, thanks. So I, I know that we need to build into our program, Kevin, that at the end of the meeting, we have to, to have some demos of what they've developed in the hackathons, particularly since they've finished one of the objectives. So we have to see that, right? So you commit to that. You'll commit to that, right, Jay? Okay. Fantastic, fantastic. That's, so I think this has been you know, a great day. We, we actually did one of our three hackathon objectives, completed that. This is an amazing day. So I'd just like to thank everybody for coming, everybody who participated, everyone who gave a talk. And come back, we'll have a couple of drinks, hand out some awards, and get some fancy new jumpers, and, and celebrate what we've done, and take a look at some really good posters. So why don't you go take a break, stretch your legs, and we'll see you back at 5.30. Thanks. So as I mentioned before, one of the things that we want to do as a, an open source community is recognize those people that contribute to the open source platform and to the community. And so this reception is one really geared towards that recognition. And to start us out on that path of recognition, I'd like to recognize you know, one of our sponsors, uh, specifically a sponsor for this awards program, uh, which is also one of the key contributors to the platform. It's so Okay's uh, Van Bakov from The Hive. I don't know if you'd like to say a couple of words. You've got a mic right there. Sure. Um... I'm very happy to be sponsoring this uh, session and also the drinks because I think um, that is really a key part to We're the community. To. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> so when, when I started the Hive three years ago, I had a session with um, the three people that we at that time were, and we thought about what are the core values of this company and we came up with sharing, reusing, and specializing. And sharing is really our first core value because that is everything to do with open source and the open source model. And I think sharing drinks is very um, appropriate yes. <laughs> in a way. There you are. Because if there's one thing very fundamental to the open source community, it's in the end, not about the technology, it's about building the trust and building relationships in which we can work together. That's really all I wanted to say. That's Thanks. fantastic. Thanks, Case. How many people do you have now? I know we have one other sponsor for the reception, which is BT Global Services. Is there anybody here from BT? Well, I will speak on behalf of our partners at BT. Um, one of the key things that's been, uh, I think, a real joy for us in, in building out the platform is, you know, as a cloud-enabled platform, you kind of need a cloud to work on with it. And when you're working in virtual teams uh, globally, you know, having a, a really well-performing, you know, uh, cloud-based platform is essential. And uh, BT jumped right in at the very beginning of this process and offered us their cloud free of charge for everything that we do. 
Um, and they've done that through the version 1.1 uh, development and hosting, through the version 1.2 development and hosting. They're now hosting a platform for the training that's going to be happening on Thursday, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and just have been, I would say, just a great partner from a cloud hosting perspective, providing us with the capabilities that we need. And uh, I'll also mention that uh, it's great when you have an open community to, to community. Um, one of the key questions when we were doing the version 1.2 development was the hosting of Oracle for the development process. And uh, one of our partners and members, Oracle, worked with BT to work out and make sure that we could have access to the Oracle-based platform and the Postgres-based platform on BT for all of our testing and development. And that was fantastic. So thanks to BT as well. So I want to go back to a, a conversation. I'm going to pick on Dan for a second. So <laughs> after, after, after Dan trying to sell me Transmart while I was at CHDI, I got back at him. Um, <laughs> and, and sat down with him, and we talked a little bit about where Transmart was going. The, the foundation was really in its in infancy. Um, you know, I'd worked with Dan on the predecessor foundation. And uh, Dan gave me some good advice. He sat down, and he says, I don't know what you know about open source, and I don't really care. He says, but read this book, <laughs> The Art of Community, um, which is really a fantastic tome. I've forced everyone on the foundation management team to read that book. So thank you, Dan, for that good advice. And one of the key aspects of building community is to recognize those members of your community that contribute to the community. And so tonight, we're going to do some of that recognition. And I'm going to make a point here, and I hope I'm right on this, and I hope that as we go through this, that uh, we do it right and we improve it every year. But I was talking with, uh, with Mike Worcester, who's the, the COO of the Linux Foundation. And I asked him advi his advice on, well, how do you recognize contributions in an open source platform? And he says, whatever you do, don't be subjective. <laughs> he said, be data driven and make sure that, that's, that you're doing it on good data. So everything we're doing tonight is data driven. Um, I want you to see that. I'd love to get people's responses to what we do after the fact. But we really do want to recognize those key contributors in the kind of categories that we think make sense. But I want to point out, we're not singling anybody out. You know, we're missing people. We're not recognizing certain people. Everybody here is valued, but we do want to point out a couple key people. So again, I want to thank the, uh, the, the planning committee, which helped with uh, putting the awards together and, and uh, went through the various awards categories with us. Uh, I do want to point out again our key sponsors uh, overall um, who have made this, this meeting and event possible and our members. But I want to get to, to the key elements here. Let's see if I can make this thing work again. So, you know, we sat down in Paris, and I think everybody's seen that the Paris uh, priorities, but it's really about the work that we did after Paris. We had a couple of key hackathons. Um, I'll call out that, you know, the, the first hackathon in February, we dragged people into a snowstorm, a literal blizzard, um, in the offices of Deloitte um, in Newton. Uh, we had Sanofi sponsor travel for, to get a bunch of the developers in there to make it work. Deloitte hosted us in their offices and provided, you know, refreshments and everything you need for a hackathon. Um, and, you know, Boston provided the weather that uh, made sure that nobody did anything else. So that was a, a great event. And that was really the kickoff of, of bringing and merging the code bases together. Uh, we repeated that in London uh, in April, uh, where we had a, a hackathon hosted at Imperial College. And then we had a number of remote sites participate in that as well. And we started working on this concept of a virtual hackathon so that we can actually get people together from places across the globe. We went fully that direction with the testathon, and the concept of a testathon was, well, we're merging these code bases, but we have lots of features that we need to see if they work or not. It's not like a de novo development where we're producing the feature. We just had to merge the code bases and make sure the features worked. And so we organized a series of testathons, and in this process, we learned a lot about, you know, making sure we're deploying the right database on the cloud-based platform, doing all sorts of work on the technical side uh, to enable that. And then we engaged the user community, a lot of the service providers, in doing testing on this. And back in, in June of last year, of this, last, this year, geez, what time is it? <laughs> it's been so fast. Uh, back in June of this year, um, we, we did an initial testing release. And the concept was, was this, is there were over 50 different data sets loaded into the platform. There were uh, about two dozen new key functions in there. We really needed to get this in the hands of people that could really work with it and test it and make that work. So we signed up people across the community. We released the code. 
we had the hosted platform and we organized a, a series of three two-week sprints around key aspects of the function of that code base. So we did those around data loading and ETL development to make sure that we could get data in and out of the platform and we could do it reproducibly. One of the things that many of you who participated in this will realize is that the first time you load data, it's very much a manual process. But we need to, to capture that so that we can quickly load things via scripts, et cetera, and we can reload the database in a, in a timely and efficient manner. And so there was a, a two-week sprint around data loading and ETL development. Then once we have the data in, we can reproducibly get it in, we can make it work, et cetera. We started doing you know, key functional testing and debugging. Do the features do what they're supposed to do? Do they make, you know, do they do analysis that they need to, et cetera? And then finally, once those features are, are really coalescing and we're getting those debugged and running forward, the last key piece here is implementation testing and debugging. Can you install the platform reliably and reproducibly? And so we went through these, these uh, basically three two-week sprints, and we ended up um, at the, uh, uh, on August 1st with the production release. And so one of the things that I'll, I'll point out is EK, in, in his wisdom, told his, his, his crew at Etrix and, and Imperial that there will be no vacations until August. And I know nobody complained, right, EK? <laughs> so, so anyway, we, had a, we worked through the summer, we got the production release, and then we turned it over uh, to Terry and the team here who uh, worked on finding uh, the right ways to, to be able to reliably debug and patch the code in its release form. And so we implemented a code governance and some key features around that. And uh, going back here, uh, September 9th and 10th, we launched the platform and issued the first patch release to the platform. So those were, were really key milestones and events, and I think were really critical to what we do. You heard from EK today what the, the real implications of this are, having a unified code base to grow from, you know, integrating code from you know, a, a dozen different code branches, um, really a tremendous effort. But to me, this encapsulates what we did as a community. Back here is when we agreed in November that we were going to get together and do this. Uh, this is the first hackathon that we held in, uh, in Boston. And we can see the growth in, in bug reports. And you can see the bug reports widely outranked the uh, bug fixes in this stage. Um, and then we had increasing sets of bug reports. But then when we got to a certain critical mass, you see both these graphs take off. And this is when we got the community engaged. So getting the community engaged via the virtual testathons, the community testing release, and working towards production, you can see we got an exponential increase in participation. This is what open source is about, right? Getting people engaged, involved, working together to, to make things happen. And uh, you can see that the rate of, of bug fixing and the rate of bug reporting were nearly identical, right? The gap in between is simply a rate change here. And then moving towards the production release, we still had some additional testing ongoing and a little bit of a gap with bug fixes, but you know, Terry can tell you exactly where we are today. Terry, how many, how many outstanding bugs do we have today? Yeah, how many outstanding bugs do we have? <laughs> how many outstanding bugs? So when we look at this, where do we stand today? Um, well, there's a lot of work left to do. <laughs> That's good. That's good. But, but we've done some really great things coming here, you know. And uh, I got, there, there are some really, really great programmers out there in this team, and I just cannot say too much about how great it is to work with you guys, so. And let me, let me talk a little bit about the process. When we started doing the hackathons and testathons, you know, the, the guys that, that stood up and really made this work were, were Terry, who did basically all the, the product management tasks and getting together the developer calls and managing that process and then making sure they're documented in the wiki. Um, everybody's read the wiki, right? Okay, well, most of you have written in the wiki. Uh, and then Kevin Smith, who did a, a fantastic job on the high end, making sure that we got those meetings on the calendar and everybody did that. So it was really a, a true group effort, and, and like I said, I think this really captures for me that community effort of, of going forward. So I, I just want to make the point. You see that little red part at the top? You see how much smaller it is than the 0 to 100 part below it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
I don't know. I'm really impressed with this one right here. Yeah. <laughs> so don't go too far, Terry, but you can have a seat for a second. So in terms of, of the code, one of the things I wanted to do is, is not having my hands on the code, and many of you who know me will say, thank God, um, is, uh, is to get a good description of the code. And I went through this a little bit earlier, but in a nutshell, and this comes from Black Duck Software, analysis of our GitHub project, which Kay's is co-manager co on. Um, there are 6,647 commits made by 98 code contributors representing 1.5 million lines of code. Okay, that's the extent of the Transmart platform. It is because it's a data warehouse, written mainly in SQL, and has, I think, the whole community should be proud of this, and, and probably Terry in particular, a very well-commented source code, which to me really speaks to its supportability case. In uh, the technical track, we had some questions about these specific um, uh, figures. So I figured maybe quickly comment on this, how this is generated in um, OpenHub. If you want, you can check it out yourself on openhub.net slash transmart. Um, this is basically a result of an analysis of 19 different code bases, uh, which all have to do something with Transmart. So that is the core API, which was presented in the core DB that, that was today presented in the technical track. And the core DB has 30,000 lines of code uh, and 350 tests or something like that. But that's only a very small piece of the whole transport infrastructure. Um, so there was some unclarity there, but I hope that I can clear it up. Yep. Um, and the fact that the SQL is the main language maybe strikes you as a little bit odd. It struck me too. But now, um, having quickly thought, um, looked at OpenHub, what's actually happening here is that the um, Transmart data instantiations of the schemas uh, are over, over representing the code base. Oh. Because obviously, um, Transmart is not really written in SQL. It's written mostly in Groovy and uh, in a number of other languages, including Java. Um, but the SQL part is because um, setting up the whole database with the th um, hundreds of tables that Transmart has um, basically is also included in this analysis. I just wanted to clarify. So. Well, you know, I thought I might be off by three or four lines of code, so I'm glad you fixed that for me. <laughs> it is amazing how complex the project is uh, on the GitHub, and I think this, this kind of gives us a good snapshot, but I, I agree with you, it's not perhaps as accurate as we might like. But the other part that I liked about this is that, you know, if you look at the kind of effort, you know, using Kokomo model, and we know that that has its caveats, but, you know, 400 man years of effort is a pretty amazing monumental task to be brought together. The other thing that I think is interesting is looking at the recent activity. You know, we can see over the last, the last 12 months, there's almost 4,000 commits to the code base, which is, you know, up quite a bit. Um, and there are 67 contributors over the last uh, 12 months. And even the last 30 days, this is post the production release, so from September 4th to October 4th, there are 157 com commits, 12 contributors, um, including one new contributor that we got just in the month of, uh, of month of September. So this is a very actively developed code base. There's a lot of, going, a lot of stuff going on there. There's a lot of complexity to it, but this is a snapshot of, of what we have. If you look at some of that over time, uh, you can see this is the last 12 months, and you can see how those commits come and go. And in particular, I think what's important is, is how they've grown over time, particularly as we've merged those code bases together and, and formed the 1.2. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Uh, in terms of contributors, um, when we look across the developers, the, the testers, um, the various people involved in this, um, in terms of bug fixing, et cetera, we have a tremendous number of, of organizations involved in this. I think if you were talking about public-private partnerships, this is a pretty extensive one. And this is people really doing, you know, significant contributions on that, on that code base. And so what I'd like to do to, to recognize people there is, is to call out sort of two levels of awards. And this is, is what we came up with. It's our first pass at this. We'll do better next year. But we have what we think of as, as superstars, people that went above and beyond the call, if you will, to, to really make key contributions to the platform. And then those that went even further. So the most valuable players, the MVPs. And so we're going to go through and, and recognize some of these key contributors um, as we go, okay? So the categories that we chose were ones that we had good data on, even with the caveats of those data. So we have, uh, from the JIRA platform, we have our bug reporters, and those are people that tested the code, 
and then issued a bug report that somebody could then fix and address, okay? So those are our testers. In addition, we had people that took on the task of debugging the code. So they took and, and assigned themselves tasks and went and fixed those problems in the code. So that red line that's, that's going, or I should say the green line that's following the red line, okay? And then the third category is, is, well, that's the bug fixing, testing and fixing part, but there's also the initial development part. And so we wanted to recognize the key code committers, and so we analyzed the GitHub using OpenHub and uh, came up with the, the really the top contributors to the code base. And so we want to recognize these three categories of, of players in our community. So let me start with, with this, which is looking at the, the reporters here. So these are the people that are testing bugs and reporting them. And I don't know who this other person is, but I really want to talk to them. Uh, but what we can see is we have you know, key contributors coming from across the, the community. You know, Yanni Pandas, Peter Rice, Zach Wright, Anik, uh, Siramon, Ward, et cetera. You know, contributing key elements. And, you know, I don't know who this guy is, but he, he seems to have done a few things there too. Don't tell me now, Terry. Don't tell me now. Don't tell me. I don't want anybody to correct me right now. <laughs> we'll fix it next year, okay? So I want to start out by recognizing the completely accurately, completely fairly recognized set of bug reporters working uh, through this. And I, I want to recognize you know, these key people. So let's, let's go through. We have a, a wonderful award that our, our spokes model, Rudy Potent Zone here, will demonstrate. <laughs> OK, so we have a wonderful award. We're going to start and work our way up to the piece de resistance. So, and I made this particularly difficult because Rudy organized these names in a particular way and I changed the slides. Can you imagine that? So first let's start out with Jay Saha from IDBS. Is Jay here? So EK will accept on behalf of Jay. Do you have Jay? Well, we will find Jay's and since Jay isn't here, we will find that. Is Ruslan here? Ruslan, you're gonna have to come up. We have an award for you. <laughs> Terry, you want to go grab it? Why don't you go grab it and we'll present it to Ruslan right here. Yeah, don't drop them, they're fragile. <laughs> so this is a superstar award, you know, for the, the Transmart Foundation, right? for your, uh, your contributions to version 1.2. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> Is Monica here? Monica Silo? So Monica Silo from Thomson Reuters. We will have uh, Siramone accepting on her behalf. So give our thanks to Monica for her efforts. Congratulations. Uh, we have, I, I think this must be one of those problems in the reports. I'm not sure how this got here. Maybe, maybe somebody delegated something to somebody. Um, but we have Jay Bergeron from Pfizer. Jay, tell us, tell us what happened. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you got to have a picture. <laughs> Congratulations. And for the, for the next award, I just want to say that this awardee got the most nominations and the most votes of any nominee. And it's, I think, Julie, how many times did you ask me about this one? <laughs> So, uh, Tanya from Rancho, is Tanya here? There we go, Tanya. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. And then, uh, finally, one of our independent uh, developers, I don't know if Chris is making it to the meeting. Is Chris, oh, there's Chris. 
So Chris Urich, Chris, I have to say that you know you're coming on and helping us out was a real boon to the project. I really appreciate it. Congratulations. Okay. Assuming we can get you the award. Yeah, I didn't know what affiliation to put up here for you, Chris. So maybe you can OSR enlighten us. OSR Data Corporation. There we go. Fantastic. Congratulations. So the next key category was the group of people taking on those bugs. So once somebody reports a bug, it's like, okay, somebody's actually got to go chase this down and figure out what's happening and, and fix it. So don't tell me how this is inflated, okay? <laughs> again, I want to meet this unassigned person. I don't know who that is, but uh, I want to thank them. But you can see, again, we had a number of, of really great contributions. Again, you know, Yanni in the group here from, uh, uh, from Imperial, people from uh, Thomson Reuters, et cetera. Um, I don't know who this guy is again. But we want to recognize the key superstars on the bug fixing side. So I know Peter's not here, but Peter Rice. Who would like to accept on behalf of Peter Rice? I'm seeing, is that Florian? Come on, Florian. Well, Florian's going to have to accept on his own, too, and Axel. So we like Peter was, was really one of the, the key managers and contributors. Yeah, do all three. Well, where's Yanni? We could do a selfie. <laughs> oh, here we go. Let's get all three together. So we've got Axel and uh, Florian. There's teamwork. Absolutely. So, you know, we're, was Peter working, you know, with Terry quite a bit that really on every call we had, you know, working with the developers, working on the bug fixing and reports, it was really Peter and Terry working together on that. So Peter was a tremendous contributor to the platform. Sinjin? Is Sinjin here? You're going to have to get another one then. <laughs> so everybody who has an award has got to show it around to people because these are pretty cool, okay? So uh, no, Charlotte's not. I, I don't think Charlotte's here as well. So we can have Sanofi accept on behalf of Charlotte. So anybody from Sanofi here? Whoa. Terrific. <laughs> there we go. Yes, fantastic. So take a photo, everybody here. Come on. I'll be on this end. You can do it. Oh, come on. It's good. <laughs> Congratulations on behalf of Charlotte. Good job, Axel. Thank you. Good job, Florian. Thank you. So my next piece of flawed data, again, nobody point out my flaws in my data, OK, um, is from an analysis of, of the GitHub. And these are the people that were actually writing code to contribute to the code base. So not just bug, you know, bug reporting and bug fixing, but actually writing code. And going back over the last 12 months uh, of commits, we can see a group of, of real superstar contributors here, you know, from Axel and, and Terry and Robert Yorlings and Peter Rice, you know, all the way up to Ruslan and Gustavo. Um, and to, uh, to Kay's point, you can see that I thought this was a description of the guys, but I guess it's, it's actually a language. <laughs> So um, what I'd like to do is recognize the superstars of code committers. Now, just I want to make sure that you recognize how cost efficient the foundation is, because we only give one person award, even if they got, got set two or three times on here. So we'll give out the rest of these. We have, uh, I think, Ruslan. We got Ruslan already, right, Ruslan? Congratulations. Uh, Riza, is Riza here? OK. I'm not sure where Riza's from. The Hive? So who will accept on behalf of Riza? That would be good. You can accept on behalf of Harm, because I know Harm's not here either. 
I spoke with him on the phone. He's no longer at the Hive. He's doing other open source projects. But uh, he was very pleased when we called him up and, and mentioned that uh, he would be recognized. <laughs> Terry. Terry. Love there you go. <laughs> okay, what you got next for us, Rudy? So, is Carlos here? Is this another Hive contributor? Okay. Uh, Peter's not here, so we'll have, we already took care of that one. We took care of flooring. Is Robert here? Robert's not here. Hmm. Terry is here, but I don't think we actually gave Terry a superstar award, did we? Huh? Oh, good. What's that one? Terry, fantastic. Imagine that. Congratulations. <laughs> fantastic. So this leads us to, to this part of the, of the program. And what we wanted to do is recognize the key individual in each of these areas that really you know, was the top contributor, made the most effort, et cetera. And so these are really for you know, individual contributors to the code base whose efforts rise well above and beyond the call of community, recognize a continued high level of contribution to the platform, to the community, and to the foundation. And so to start this, uh, we again wanted to look through our categories of code committers, bug reporters, bug fixers, but then there were a couple of key categories we also wanted to recognize, and that is technical support and project management, key things that were really at a high level integral to be, being able to produce a, a really good 1.2 product. So on the code contributing side, um, I looked at, at the top of that list and saw Gustavo's name. I was not surprised. But almost 1,500 all-time commits and over 900 over the past 12 months. Gustavo, you're an animal. Uh, look at, if you look at this, these code graphs, it's like amazing. He's got this amazing number of code, code uh, commits. So Gustavo, you're our first MVP. You can't just stay there. So Terry will model the really fancy superstar award. But what I want to show you here is, is the global contributions that our MVPs make. And you know, with that fancy looking Transmart logo on there that Rudy came up with, it's fantastic. So congratulations. Good job. Um, on the technical support side, I think I mentioned earlier about how integral BT was to this effort. And in fact, the real part that made all that BT work work was David Brown. David Brown was on call basically 24 hours a day. When we're going through hackathons and systems are crashing, we're on the phone with him. Uh, really was amazing in the effort that he put forward here. Um, David has, has, has just recently left BT and has joined uh, the, what, what is it? The, 100,000 genomes effort, UK genomes, genomes England. And so he, in fact, is actively working on bringing Transmart to Genomes England. Um, and we wanted to recognize his efforts here, uh, both on behalf of BT and, and et cetera, with giving him an MVP award. So we'll ship that to him since I know he's not here. Um, Yuri will accept on his behalf. Yuri. Congratulations. Thank you. And I'm sorry for being late. <laughs> that happens. That ha oh, you got to get a picture. Got to get a picture. <laughs> Thanks. Give Dave our best. Oh, and not last and not least, <laughs> this is my MVP award. Um, I have to say that, uh, you know, working with, with Terry throughout the development process, this is a guy that we could not have done 1.2 if Terry were not involved. You did an amazing job, Terry. I'm very impressed with the effort you did. And in fact, being able to, to help bring all these guys together and have them not even complain, which they always do when I do it. So fantastic job. Congratulations. We really appreciate the effort. Good job, Terry. Thank you. You can sit down now. Take your awards and get out of here.
So I, I have to say that, you know, being being CEO of the foundation has been, uh, you know, it's 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 been a lot of work, especially for a part-time job, um, and it's it's been a lot of effort and you know making things happen over the past you know 12 months in, in growing the foundation, building the membership program, you know, putting together our meetings like this, putting together the uh, you know, all the things around the version 1.2 in terms of the hackathons, the code meetings, et cetera, assembling even the, the agenda and making the logistics work for this. You know, I don't know if this should be an MVP award, maybe it should be a Superman award, but um, I'd like to recognize Kevin Smith as, as the foundation MVP for all the work that he has put in, in all levels of what the foundation has been doing. Kevin, I, you know, you've been doing a fantastic job, thank you. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Good job, Thanks. man. So those are our awards, our superstars, our MVPs. Um, I think these are, are the key people that we wanted to call out for really making critical contributions uh, to the foundation, to the version 1.2 project, and contributing overall for the past year. That's been great. Um, I think, as, as I mentioned earlier, you know, everybody that's here has been a contributor. Everybody here has, has, has uh, contributed to the platform. I wanna thank everyone here. And as a part of that, we have a little thank you. So Rudy has, has taken care of producing uh, what is now being called the Transmart Foundation Jumper, uh, thanks to Ike. <laughs> I would have called it a fleece, but now it's the jumper. Um, so uh, as soon as we're done here, uh, Rudy, and, and I think, is Kevin helping you with that? So we're going to be handing out the fleeces. Please, we only have just enough to go around. If we miss somebody, let me know. We'll, we'll make some more and send them to you. We actually expected, you know, to have maybe 115, 120 people here. I think we're about 130 now, and we ordered 135. So... Um, everybody gets a fleece. If you don't get one, let me know um, and take that with you as a token of appreciation from the foundation to you for contributing to this community. Thank you. So with that, why don't I let, the bar is still open. Let me make a quick announcement. Uh, the bar will be open until seven, so you better hurry. Um, secondly, there'll be two shuttles leaving back for the hotels at 7.30 and a last shuttle at 7.45, okay? Something else, Kevin? <laughs>